The 1 billion row challenge is a coding trend that has been going viral. So what is it exactly? The original challenge created by Gunnar is a Java focused problem where engineers take 1 billion rows and calculate the min, mean, and max. They then print the results to a file. The goal of the 1 billion row challenge is to create the fastest implementation. There are a lot of really incredible solutions being built here. Someone got their results down under seven seconds. This is really incredible. But I wanna take this challenge in a new direction. In this video, I wanna use the 1 billion row challenge as an opportunity to show you how you can utilize next generation AI tools to code faster than ever. We're going to utilize co-pilots like Aider and Cursor. Then we're gonna utilize OpenAI's assistance API to construct and consume knowledge bases that can solve problems automatically for us. Instead of Java, we're gonna be building an implementation of this challenge using Electron, TypeScript, and to top it off, we're going to store 1 billion rows in an in-memory duck database. It's a simple in-memory database. By the end of this video, we'll have an end-to-end -end solution where we can page through 1 billion rows in an Electron app. Let's get started. So I've got a mostly empty Electron application here. I made some tweaks to it. Let's go ahead and just kick it off. You can see we're using a Vite view front end. Front end language you're using doesn't really matter. Let's, first things first, let's clear out our template and start from scratch. I'm gonna open up cursor, open the view component, highlight, I'm gonna use control K, and I'm just gonna say clear out this view component. And you can see step by step, cursor is doing the work for us. It's got this nice diff. I'm gonna hit command enter and just like that, we have a brand new view component. Create an H1 and say 1 billion row challenge, electron edition. Now I wanna increase the window size here of our electron application. It's a little small and I wanna automatically open up the dev tools on startup. So let's go ahead, we'll open up the main process and I'll explain what the main and render process is in a second here. And again, using cursor, I'm gonna highlight everything. Hit command K, 1400 height 1100 auto open dev tools I'm gonna hit enter there and just let that rip so cursor is going step by step and it's going to go ahead continue to permeate throughout the rest of the highlighted code I've really been enjoying using cursor it's a hit most of the times every once in a while it'll miss something and you'll have to basically just reprompt but no big deal here it's got this perfect I'm gonna go ahead and accept these changes we have the new height new width and we're going to open up dev tools on startup and an electron world this is exactly how you do that and bam the application refreshed and we have a pretty nice size here that's going to be good for us to keep rolling here so i'm going to move this to the bottom in the 2024 predictions video i talked about how front-end engineering is going to be the first to go due to outsourcing and due to llm technology let me show you exactly why i said that and why i mean that so in order to render our front end, we're going to need two specific types. We're going to need pagination so that we can render pages and we're going to need our row types. Create two TS interfaces. And then I'm just going to map out exactly what I want them to look like. So I'm just gonna say pagination and this is gonna look like per page. And the BRC row is our 1 billion row challenge row. It's going to contain the results from uh, Gunnar's post here. And it's going to look something like this. So we're going to actually display both versions of this. So we want to have the station and the temperature. And then I want to have the station, the min, mean, and the max here. So let's go ahead and just type that out. So station, min, mean, max, and then measurement. And then I'll hit submit and let's see how cursor does this. So great. That's exactly what I wanted. Let's go ahead and proceed. Now that we have our types, let's create some mock data. Instead of using cursor, I'm gonna go ahead and boot up Aider. Aider is one of the best pair programming tools and it just came out with a new unified diff feature that, that improves code accuracy. So let's go ahead and boot up Aider. I'm gonna export my OpenAI key and then I'm gonna run Aider dash dash four dash turbo. Awesome, I'm gonna add the app.view file. Now Aider has the app.view file in its context and now what I'm gonna say is, generate rows of the a view ref. As you can see, it's getting to work right away. Now it's just pushing through, creating results, creating some values for us. This is really awesome. While this is working, I wanna show off the high level architecture of an Electron application. So 
You can see here, Electron is quite simple. We have the renderer process, which is where we're working right now. That's where Ader is writing code for us. We have the main process. And you know the big difference here is that the main process and the renderer are separated for security reasons. You don't want the front end application or a you know, front end user being able to access all of your computer's internal files and access to basically a full terminal where they can do anything. So the render is isolated to just the user interface, right? The main process is, you can think of it like the back end, right? So Electron main is a Node.js process that has full access to any functionality that you can run in a shell. So this is really powerful. This is how we're going to run scripts. This is how we're going to build our measurements and it will connect and read and write to our duck database. So that's the high level architecture here. Let's hop back over to our front end. We can see that Peter created those rows for us. That's perfect. And so now let's create a table, right? Let me just quick hop over to the Beautify documentation. I'm gonna grab the component I want to use here. So we'll use Ader again here, and I'm gonna ask Ader to build out a simple implementation of the table. So I'll say beautify build an implementation the table server component with our BRC rows. I send the example from the documentation, and I'm just gonna let that rip. And now it's rendering for us. So let's see how it's done. We have our new load items function. This is where we're gonna call our backend to load new results with the pagination. And here we have our front end. So we don't need value here. So this is a slight error. Let me go ahead and get rid of this. And we need to have our items per page set up somewhere here. I'm gonna go ahead and create some state for us for our paginations. We also don't need use Beautify. We're gonna have this global so we can get rid of that. Format this, we'll collapse our rows. We'll create the items per page variable here. I'm gonna say 10 for now. We need to make sure we configure Vueify. Let's go ahead and do that now. I'll open up the main TS file where we configure Vue.js. Gonna highlight it all. We'll just use cursor here. I'll say add Vueify. Okay, not bad, but not perfect. I'll add to the follow-up instructions and I'll say use the Vueify. Awesome, so now we should have access to Vutify components. Let me go ahead and make one more tweak here. I'm gonna say import Vutify components, use dark mode. All right, awesome. So you can see here we imported components. I don't really need directives. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then we have theme dark. That's not exactly right. We wanna use the default theme and we'll just set the default theme to dark. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and look at Electron and bam, you can see here we have 1 billion world challenge, Electron edition, and we have a nice table below. It has our mock entries here. Just like that, we built out a table, created a few prompts. Um, we really didn't do a whole lot. We used Cursor and Ader to quickly build a working example of this. So now we have a front end prototype that we can work with. Let's go ahead and wire this up and start working our way from the renderer process to the main process to the database. In the Electron world, we are exposed this variable here. So window.electronAPI, and then we have send message. And if we just search the send message here, you can see in this preload is making the send message available to the Electron front end. And if we hop over to the main process, you can see at the bottom here, we have IPC on. So, so this is saying the main process is waiting for an event called message. And once it receives that, it's going to console log that message. So what we want to do here is set up a couple events from and to the renderer process. We're going to update the types of the messages that we want to see. And then we're going to ask Ader to implement the functionality for us. And we want this to be git billion row challenge page. And what we're going to pass in is the items number and items per page. And then we want a on function. So this is gonna be an event listener. And let me hop over to VS Code. So there we go. So now we have an on event that we can listen to on the front end to wait for results coming back from the main process. So now we're gonna do a couple things here. We're gonna use Ada for this because it's this gonna be a cross file change. I'm gonna hit add. And then I'm gonna add a couple files. I'm gonna add the electron.d. I'm going to add the preload. I'm going to add main.ts on the main side. So I'm gonna add all those files, implement the git brc page and the on function. 
app.view file and main.ts and preload.ts. Okay, awesome. So one of the great parts about Ader is that it can write across files. So this is really incredible. So we're getting code changes coming across files, the single prompt, you can see applied edit to three different files. And let's go ahead, of course, always walk through the changes that have been generated for you. We can see here, we have a duplicate send message, no problem, get rid of that. We have our git BRC page. What we want this to do is call the IPC and just go ahead and pass those parameters through. So I'm just gonna say params, awesome. And then we have our on-channel callback here. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a quick tweak to this. This is actually going to come in looking like this. IPC render dot on, passing the channel and the callback. That's going to be the communication there. Let's go ahead and fix this. We just have a duplicate defined here. Get rid of the duplicate ref. Awesome. So we're rendering OK. And that gives us the ability to communicate through our from a render process to our main process. So if we open up main now, we can see that we have this on git BRC page. Let me just go ahead and move this to the bottom of the file and we'll update this to be the right value. So this is gonna be BRC page. And then you can see it's responding. So this is gonna be the git BRC page response. And this is just gonna return some stubbed data, fit the logs a little bit here so that it's super clear what's happening. When the application starts on mounted, we're gonna to listen to the git BRC page response. And we're just gonna log that data there. We're gonna go ahead and run our Electron API. And as you can see here, we now have this new type function. We'll say git BRC page. And what we'll do is we'll just pass in these params here. Table is just gonna be, to start, we'll use the BRC. Items per page, we'll just say 10. And then page, we'll say one. And actually we can pass in the actual values here. So. We have items per page. All we need is a new page variable. Create that right now. Start on page one, of course. And let's go ahead and just use. Awesome. And we'll create one more variable here for the table. We'll update this later. This is just going to be BRC. Awesome. So now when the application loads, as you can see here, we're going to get a response back. So I'm going to hit refresh here. And you can see here the electron process received a git BRC call with the table, items per page, and the page. And the front end received a response from the back end. And it looks like we have the wrong event there. We want the second parameter. Let me just go ahead and tweak that. Go into app.view. It's going to be payload. And so we want to see exactly what that looks like. So you can see here we have data. This is a stubbed response. And that comes all the way from our main process here. And that's our stubbed response. So awesome. So, so this wires us up to our back end process. So let's keep moving, right? So let's revisit that architecture diagram. If we look at this more detailed version, what we've been working on is our app.view file, right? We've set up the communication between our app.view file and our main process. So that's awesome. Now what we need to do is move on to the data side. So let's move on to the more main process data side so we can generate the rows and the results that are going to go inside of our duck database. So first thing we need to do is use this create measurement script to generate the rows, right? You can see here in the original blog post, there's a script in here that generates the station and the temperature. So what we're going to do is come in here and generate this file. So I've already got this created here. If we go to create measurements. So if we look at the application structure, we can see we have our source there's a main process there's a render process this data directory and it's got this weather stations.csv file so this is what we're going to use to generate a whole new batch of these items if we open up scripts and create measurements i've built this create measurements script that's going to take the weather stations input and output the data measurements.txt so let's go ahead and just run our scripts i'll open up a new terminal here and let's run this so if we look at packages you can see here we have generate so i'm going to just type yarn run generate and then you enter in how many rows you want. So let's just start with 100 rows, right? So you can see here, we now have a new measurements.txt file and it's got 100 rows with random temperatures. 
Let's go ahead and bump that up. Let's go ahead and generate 10,000. Cool, so we got an update there. That's 10,000 records. And you know where this is going. We need to generate more to get to the 1 billion number. So when you actually run this, um, it's going to consume about eight minutes of time to generate the 1 billion rows. For now, what we're gonna do is just generate, uh, what do we have here? A million rows, we'll do 10 million rows. So I'm gonna let that rip. Still a lot of data that completed in five seconds. That's awesome. So now we have measurements.txt. So we're gonna operate on this file. So let's talk about the data side of things. There's this great blog post. This engineer used SQL and DuckDB to, to load in the data for these measurements. I thought this was really cool. And I also saw this as a great opportunity to utilize the OpenAI Assistance API to use this blog as a knowledge base for code generation. Let me show off Turbo 4 in Assistance API wrapper that we've been using on the channel. For this video, I created the TypeScript version. So long story short with this is, this is a wrapper around the OpenAI Assistance API. You can get and create assistance, you can set instructions, you can equip tools, you can make threads, add messages, etc. So let's start with a basic example of how we can use the Turbo 4 Assistant to run prompts, create knowledge bases, and generate useful code based on those knowledge bases. So let's start simple. The scripts, there's this agent ops file. So this is agent operations. And you can see here, it's got a nice clean format here. It's got a couple of paths for us to work with, but this is basically where we're going to run our assistant to generate code that we can then use to generate our duck database with all of our rows. It's also gonna generate our pagination functionality for us. So let's start with a simple example. If you've seen previous videos in the channel, you know exactly what the Turbo 4 assistant is and what its capabilities are. We'll start from the bottom up. So Turbo 4, we're going to get or create an assistant, we're gonna call it one billion row challenge assistant, await turbo four, we'll then add message. And we'll say list one great thing about DuckDB. We'll say list three great things. We'll then run this thread and then we'll get the messages. And then we'll just dump these messages out, right? So we'll just say messages. This is a self-contained TypeScript file. So what I'm gonna do here is just run bun scripts agent ops and just let that rip. So you can see here, it's running through the functionality. We retrieved the assistant. Turbo 4 is great because it handles um, upserting, getting and using existing assistants and files. You can see that it's describing DuckDB and you know it's talking through some of the use cases of Duck Database, which is really awesome. So, so this is the basic flow for uh, Turbo 4. Let's go ahead and up this a little bit, right? Let's use Turbo 4 to create a knowledge base based on a URL. So we're gonna make just a couple tweaks here. I'm gonna create a knowledge base path. So this is going to be the location in which we'll store our knowledge base. And I'm going to set this to 1 billion row challenge original. So once we have our knowledge base path, what we can do is use Turbo 4 to collect a knowledge base for us. And so what this does is it's going to take a URL. So let's go ahead and get the URL of our knowledge base here. So let's use the original 1 billion row challenge post by Gunnar. Let's just run some knowledge base queries against that. So KB source, knowledge base source. And let's pass that in as the URL. And then we need the file path. Let's use that. And then we're gonna use Turbo 4. So this is going to generate the file locally in our agent output directory. Now we're gonna use Turbo 4 to upsert the file. So we're gonna upsert the KB path. This is gonna be a list of files we wanna upsert. And this is gonna give Turbo 4 and our 1 billion row challenge assistant access to these files. One more thing we need to do here, we need to make sure that we enable um, retrieval. So we're gonna make that call there. I'm gonna update this prompt here, and I'm just gonna ask, you know, what is the one billion row challenge? And then I'm gonna ask one more thing. So I'm gonna ask something really specific so that we know that this is working, right? So if we scroll down here, um, Gunnar talks about the machine that is operating on this. So we're gonna ask a question, you know, a really specific question here. I'm gonna say, what instance are submissions evaluated on? So being really specific. So one last tweak we need to make here. When we upsert files, we get file IDs. And this is a list of the return file IDs. So, you know, this is gonna be what string, string like this. And when we ask questions, we need to pass in our file IDs. So for both the add message, we're going to pass in file IDs at the end there. And this will say, when you're running this message, make sure you refer to these files. So let's go ahead and run. 
So you can see here we have enabled retrieval. We have our files upserted. We're adding a message about the 1 billion row. And then we're asking our second question and we should get some results here. You can see here in the agent output, 1 billion row challenge original, the knowledge base got generated and here we go. So let's look at this. We asked the question, what is the 1 billion row challenge? Initiative that invited coders to write a Java program capable of handling a large data set, retrieve temperatures, I'll put the min, max, mean. So dot that right. And let's look at the evaluation. So you can see here, one being real challenge are evaluated on a Heisner Cloud TCX33. So that's really specific. Let's go ahead and open up the blog and just search that. So bam, you can see it got it right. So this is actively looking at this knowledge base to generate content. So what I'm gonna do here now is I wanna pull the solution from this post since it's using DuckDB and I want our Turbo 4 assistant to generate and write this code, literally write the solution we need to a file by reading this documentation. We'll also have it generate our pagination function that we'll use in TypeScript so I'm gonna give it the DuckDB documentation as well. I wanna show you how useful these tools can be and I'm running out of time here, so I'm gonna speed through this part. Okay, so from top to bottom here, let's walk through exactly what we have. So we have two knowledge spaces, DuckDB block, and we have the DuckDB documentation for Node.js. I created a reference to an agent spyware file. So this is gonna monitor our assistant between each run of its message. After we have our knowledge base files, we're going to create our assistant again. We're going to set an instruction. Basically, we're just saying, you know, you're a top performing engineer. You know how to read knowledge bases and generate concise solutions. We're enabling retrieval. We're collecting those two knowledge base sources. We're going to upload those files to the assistance API. And then we're going to equip this write file tool. This write file tool uses the proper, you know, syntax for assistance API tools. And all it really does here is it takes, you know, contents and file name, and it's just going to write to a file, right? So using the FS node library and after we have that we're going to create a thread right just as you do with the assistance api and then we're going to run the following prompts read the knowledge base and generate sql that will convert measurements.txt into a duct database table called brc with the columns station min max mean with completed calculations so this is going to generate the code by looking at the knowledge base and remember this knowledge base is going to be this DuckDB blog. We're then saying use the write function to write the SQL results to a file. So this is going to allow us to run the generate table results directly, right? So it's going to generate the code for us and then we're going to run it. After that, we're saying given this DuckDB table and we're using the power of threads here, right? So when we make a thread, all of this content is going to be in the thread, just like you're running a chat GPT message that has the previous messages above, you'll be able to maintain these messages without doing any of the work, right? So this is the beauty of Turbo 4 and the Assistance API's thread functionality. So, you know, given the DuckDB table and the DuckDB docs create a TypeScript function where we can page through the results of the BRC table using page and size params. So remember, we created the table BRC up here, and then we're saying use write file function to write results to a file called page table.ts. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but it's actually quite simple. Build the knowledge bases, equip your tools, run your prompts, reference the files when you need to, and reference the tools when you need to. At the bottom, we're going to print out our messages. We're going to go ahead ahead and create a new script. We're going to call this agent and agent is going to run TS node. This allows us to run TypeScript node functionality. TS node is going to be scripts and this is agent ops.ts. Sometimes bun works. Sometimes bun is missing some essential node APIs. It's one of the kind of crappy parts about bun right now, but that's totally fine. When it does work, it is great. Let's go ahead and move back and now we'll run yarn run agent. Awesome. So you can see we created those two knowledge base files and we can go ahead and look at this knowledge base file. I realize we didn't actually look at the last one. So all it is is, you know, URL, write path, title, and then we have the content of the blog. So literally it just takes, you know, it scrapes the entire um, web page and just kind of dumps it into the string that our agents can can look at and, and can use, right? So that's our knowledge base file. And you can see there, we also got the DuckDB docs. And so this happens. So every once in a while between the agent commands, they're going to generate a bad result. So literally I'll, I'll just rerun it and it'll push past it with uh, usually one or two attempts. Okay, so we're making progress here. You can see now we have the generate table.sql. Our first two prompts ran. We'll dig into the SQL exactly in a second. Let's just go ahead and see the rest of this through. We want to see that page table.ts file get created. Great. 
So our agent just finished creating and writing that page table function for us. We could look at the entire agent log here. There's a lot here. I'm not going to go through it. I think we can just look at the assets that our assistant has generated for us. So, so, you know, starting from the top, we have our agent spyware. This is what our spyware calls are doing. So this, these are the individual logs. We can take a look at that, dissect, see what our agent is thinking at any point. The DuckDB documentation. So, you know, you can always verify. It's good to do a sanity check. If we just come in here, we grab some text here where the callback is invoked. And then we actually go to the DuckDB docs and search. You can see right at the top there, um, you know, that's the exact text. So our collect knowledge base functionality is working. And then we have our 1 million row challenge with DuckDB. Let's go ahead and just copy some, go to the original blog, and there we go. So we got that content scraped properly, and our agent has access to that knowledge base. Now let's go ahead and look at specific results, right? So we have this generate table SQL. Let's see how it's done. So. This is really cool. So just by giving our you know assistant slash agent, whatever you want to call it, just by giving it the right knowledge base, the right prompt, and you know the right resources, essentially, it has generated the results we're looking for here, right? So we can just go ahead and run this right now. So I'm going to open up a terminal here, and we're going to generate a new DuckDB by running these commands. So you can see here, this is going to read the measurements.txt file and create a table called measurements. And then we're going to get our BRC table right here. And it's going to, you know, calculate the min, the average, the max for us. And just to call it out here, you know, this was pulled essentially right from the, the knowledge base, right? So it's generating all this for us and it's extending it. We don't actually get a full complete table with the measurements calculated in the blog. So it's actually, you know, extending its knowledge of DuckDB and SQL, generating that for us. So let's go ahead and just run this file. So this is a great opportunity to show off some of the great capabilities of DuckDB. So what I wanna do is create a new DuckDB inside this data folder. So what I'm gonna do is type DuckDB, make sure you brew install DuckDB or, you know, install DuckDB. And then it's gonna take the path. So I'm gonna say data, db.duckdb and then i'm just going to pass in this sql file to generate the results that we're looking for so i'm going to say less than and then we want data agent output and we have all the agent output coming to this file and i'm just going to say generate table.sql and i'm just going to run this so we got a little error here it says we can't find this measurements.txt file this is running from the top wherever we're running this script so what i'm going to do here is say data slash measurements that should be right i'm just going to rerun this Awesome. So you can see here we have a new db.duckdb. So this is our new database file. And let's go ahead and jump into it and see what we have in there. So same kind of command, duckdb, point to the data, and then I'm going to run a really cool duckdb command just called dot tables. Bam. So you can see here inside that database, we have two tables. Let's go ahead and look at some results from the tables. From measurements, limit five. Awesome. So you can see here we have five measurements inside of our DuckDB table. And we can do the same thing with BRC. So BRC should contain our min, max, and average. So let's go ahead and look at BRC. Look at that. Min, mean, max. So this is really incredible. We now have a in-memory database built. Our agents basically built it entirely for us. We tweaked one thing. We just tweaked the location of the file. It was all generated, you know, based off our uh, measurements.txt. And, you know, this ran pretty quickly. Again, this only has 10 million rules, which is pretty crazy to say, you know, this function ran so incredibly fast. You know, it's nothing like the, the 1 billion row generation, the 1 billion row calculation that the original challenge calls for. I just want to highlight like our agent did so much work for us. It's incredible. And it actually, you know, wrote a lot of the implementation for us. These knowledge bases really could be anything and your props really can do and be uh, anything as long as you, you know, give them the right information. So, you know, really want to call this out. This is definitely one of the highlights of the video. This is where things are going. You know, it's this customized in a really unique way to solve a very domain specific problem with a nice user interface wrapped around it, right? There are things that need to be improved, but you know, there's so much value here. Um, got it. A nice spelling error here. Don't worry about that. Let's continue. So it generated two files for us, right? One is our DuckDB table and the other is our page table functionality. So let's go ahead and just see what this looks like. So execute query. So this is not exactly right. You know, just from having implemented this myself, it isn't perfect. Uh, it looks like it didn't quite read the functionality right. It didn't quite read the documentation right. That's totally fine. I'm just gonna make a couple modifications here. 
we'll copy this example here right from the docs and then we're going to go ahead and we'll use cursor here we'll say we'll say use this doc example to fix db.all wrap and promise and let's see how it does so it's going to return a new promise same path and there we go so now we have promise getting returned properly there um, we do need to return page minus one or we multiply by size. We'll just do that ourselves manually, no problem. So this old example is outdated. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back. You can see here I'm using both VS Code and Cursor. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this. Okay, so I'm gonna say create a new example given the new implementation. Shouldn't change any of the existing implementation, but what it will change is the example here. So, oh, it's actually trying to use the IPC on. Really interesting here. So. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and accept that. Um, I'm going to pull it out into a flat call that we can just run right on this file. So, okay, so awesome. So we can see here we have results coming out of our example file here. This is great. So now our page table is functional. Let me go ahead and get rid of this example. And let's move page table inside of the main application here, right? So we're going to move this out of the data agent output into source main page table so that we can utilize it inside the main function. So let's go into main and let's wire up our function. So I'm going to call, I'm going to import our page table, get BRC page. Now we're going to run parameters. So we're going to say, and we're going to pass in each parameter. So table, page, and size. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and just send the items back. That's all we need to respond with. So you can see here we have an error paired statement. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. Let's go ahead and follow the docs a little more closely. We're gonna use a connection. We're gonna say db.connect, update these two variables to just SQL, and let's see how that runs. Size, let's update size to items per page. So we have table, page, items per page. Let's make sure we're passing that in properly. Good, table page, and we're passing in size here. So what we actually need is items per page. That's what the front end's gonna give us. There we go. So we can see here, data received from main process. We now have 10 different rows. So let's go to the front end and wire up our response from our back end. So let's go to app.view, and we're going to be getting the responses here, get BRC page response. And let's go ahead and set BRC rows, BRC rows, the value equals payload. Don't worry about any of the type errors. Of course, there's a better way to do that. We can fix those, clean those up. It's not what we're focused on here. And that should update. And bam, so you can see here we have our variables. So this is really cool. So we can now select how many rows we want to see here. But right now we're not updating any of the state to send to the back end. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're updating our state on the front end and calling a function to fully load items, right? Right now, load items is empty. So let's go ahead and just prepare what we're gonna send. So we're gonna say, and we're going to pull in whatever we need here. So page, perfect. Yeah, table.value, awesome. So this is gonna give us exactly what we need. Window.electron API, get BRC page and just pass back the pagination, right? That's gonna be our load items call. And so when we start, we wanna kick off loading equals true. And then when the response comes back in the on call, you can go ahead and set loading equals false. So that's great, we can get rid of the set timeout. Great, we have pagination. Now all we need to do is actually call our load items. So we can see here, if we update to 25 items, we're getting now 25 rows. If we update to 50, we're getting 50 rows back now, right? So that's awesome. Um, let's go ahead and make a couple more tweaks. You can see on the main process, we're logging the table, the page, and the items per page. You may have noticed we don't have pagination. So let's go ahead and add the pagination. Ask Ader, you know, add the beautify when updated call load items. Okay, so we're gonna fire that off. There we go. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Open up our Electron application. 
Let's see where that is. Okay, so that's down there. So it does exist. Let's go ahead and look at what exactly that looks like. So bam, the page pagination. We have the page there. And so length is gonna be total items divided by the items per page. Let's go ahead and set our total items. We know that we're going to have a crap ton. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of zeros here. And that's gonna give us some pages to cycle through. So this is awesome. One thing I noticed, it's not actually updating. We need to add a view watcher here so that we're reactively calling load when the page updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use Ader for that. I'm just gonna say, add a view watcher on page, call load items on update. So just, you know, leaning on our co-pilots to get some of that simple boilerplate kind of code done. And if we just search the page now, we can see we have a watcher on page. And when it updates, we're going to call load items. So now if we come in, hit two, hit three, hit four, hit five, you can see here we're cycling through our results and this is really awesome, right? So you can see, you know, just page, 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 page. And let's go look at our main process. You can see we're looking at the BRC table, page 50 items per page, one, uh, 10. And you know, <laughs> this is awesome. So we have a end-to-end -end solution here, but a uh, couple pieces left, right? So let's go ahead and push this all the way through, right? Let's go ahead and add our headers. So let's make sure our headers are coming through, okay? This is saying text here. This needs to be, uh, I think it's title. Just go ahead and update that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, great. And then I think there's an align. We want to align center. Just go ahead and do quick manual coding just to clean these things up a little bit. Um, okay, station. What's wrong with station? The lines there. There we go. So there's our headers. Nice. That's looking a lot better. And you can see here we have measurement. So measurement doesn't exist for a station. So what I want to do is create two sets of headers. Of course, let's just go ahead and prompt this. Let's have Ader do this for us. So create two sets of headers. One for BRC table and one for measurements table. Uh, BRC equals, I'll just say uh, min, mean, max. Say measurements equals, I think it's just called measurement. Let's just hit enter, see what happens there. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we've got here. So we have BRC headers and we have measurement headers. And interesting, so it's created this table variable for us that sorts when specific variables should be seen. So it's not getting consumed yet, so that's fine. Um, what we want to do now is create a select component where we can select exactly what table we want to focus on. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that. Again, we're just going to use Ader. We're going to say, I'll go ahead and create the state just so it has something to work off of. I'll say, um, I think we already have a table variable actually. Yeah, there we go. Okay, table. So create a vselect component, updates the table between. Okay, so we'll let that run. Awesome. And remember, we're doing this so that we can toggle between both the BRC and the measurement results. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. So we have an error. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. looks like we have two headers. It looks like it just left these two headers in here. I'm going to delete our first one. And then it's going to look at table dot value. We just want table. And it looks like, what do we want to look at here? Yeah, table. And then it's got a ref for tables, which gives us the options to look between both results. Let's go ahead and take a look at our app so far. So there we go. So now we have select table. So we can choose between our two tables. You can see here we have our headers updating to the BRC format. Let's tweak that. We also want to have, it looks like it's just missing the table. So I'll add BRC to that and great. So now we have that. And now we can cycle through all these results. Let's see if we can get table switching working. So select table, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to measurements. And it looks like it did change the table structure. We also want a new variable for our station column when the results are set to the measurements table. So let's go ahead and add that there. Let's go ahead and toggle back. And maybe station isn't exactly what we're looking for, um, but we need to regardless, there we go on change load items, very good. So we should be getting new results back here. Should be able to open up the dev tools and see the structure. Okay, so, you know, as we switch here, you can see we're loading the different tiers of results. We have station and we have measurements. What we're actually looking for is the station name. So let's go ahead and update station name here in the header. Value is going to be station name. So if we switch to measurements, awesome. All right, fantastic. So we can now select 
different tables. We can select the, both the BRC table, which has the computed min, mean, max. We can cycle through and we can switch to the raw measurements, which is just the, you know, raw with duplicate stations with different measurements. And this is going to be, you know, the list that contains the 1 billion results. So we've almost completed our electron 1 billion row challenge. The last thing we need to do is make sure that we're getting all the rows to the front end. If we hop back over to the application in VS Code, you can get rid of the BRC initial results. We're gonna load those in from our server as soon as the app starts. We're going to up the total items to be 1 billion. So normally this comes back from your server, but I'm just gonna do this so I can actually see how many zeros are there. That gives us 100 million. And then if we just add one more zero here, we're going to have 1 billion rows. So comma, 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 1 billion rows, incredible. That's gonna be how many items we're actually gonna get back. And you can see that that creates a ton of pages. And uh, you know, let's increase our, oh, we gotta get rid of that all. That would be insane to try to render 1 billion rows. Let's go ahead and add some larger sizes here for our front end. We're just going to throw this at, let's go ahead and use cursor. So I'm gonna open up cursor, same file. We'll inline this and we'll just say add items per page options. And we want 10, we'll do factors of 10, right? So 100, 1000, 1000, 100,000, and we'll stop there. <laughs> uh, front end will just explode if we add more. Cool, so that's exactly what we're looking for. Let's go ahead and save that and open up Electron, check the front end. Let's see what we have there. So nice, so now we have 10, 100, so now we're getting 100. And let's go ahead and set a height on this table. I don't want it to overflow like this, right? So I'm gonna just highlight again. This is my favorite thing about cursor. It's just in editor. Like this is the way that the future of editing is going to be, I think. Right in your editor, ask for what you want to change and it will change it. So let's go ahead and just say a limit height to, we'll say 500 pixels. So hopefully it knows that there's a prop you can do this with. Let's see if it gets that. No, it uses style. Uh, we're just gonna say use a height prop. And this was, you know, to be totally honest, this was a kind of dumb thing to prompt, like just add the height yourself. Uh, it's fine. Uh, great, so let's go ahead and accept that. And now we got height 500, great. So that looks good. Let's bump this up to 1,000, very nice. Going through 1,000 of the BRC rows. And, you know, I'm actually curious how many rows we have. So let's go ahead and check with, you know, I wanna see using DuckDB, how many rows are actually in both of these tables, right? Same kind of command, we're gonna see, look at DuckDB and instead of from BRC limit five, what I'm gonna say is from BRC, select count star. Uh, okay, so we have a Database error, it's probably in use somewhere. Let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna kill our process to unlock DuckDB and run again. There we go, okay. So, you know, the combined min, max, mean, uh, we have a total of 3,000 rows. So we can actually just, if we boot up our front end again, and we're looking at the BRC, if we just bump this up to uh, 10,000, you can see here we're gonna get uh, just 3,000 rows. There's no, there's nothing else to render here. So in our front end, we're successfully rendering nice, uh, you know, a, a hefty 3,000 rows. That's great. Um, and if we go to page two, there's not going to be anything on page two. It's at page 20,000. There's nothing there. On the other hand, if you've used SQL, you know that this is the improper syntax, but it actually reads a lot, a lot more nicely. This is one of the nice parts about uh, DuckDB. Usually you work from high level down. So you start with your table and then you have your columns. SQL had you know, developed that weird standard where you select the columns first and DuckDB lets you just reverse that, right? So the from comes before the select. Really nice feature of DuckDB. So from measurements, we're gonna count star. So you can see here we have 10 million rows. If we go ahead and just copy this out, it's always easier to just do this, All right? 10 million rows here. This is great. If you run the measurement script that I created here, this is what's generating this measurements.txt file, right? Uh, 10 million is a crap ton, but to get to a, a 1 billion, we're gonna need a lot more rows. You know, I ran this command the other day. I'm not going to run it again. Uh, you know, it takes about eight minutes to run if you have a good machine. So what I'm gonna do here is just copy in a measurements that I previously did an experiment on that has the 1 billion rows. You can feel free to jack up 
the generate call as much as you like. So it's just yarn run generate and then you specify how many rows you want. So you can see here, there's the proof of concept version I created yesterday, 14 gigs. This is the full version. We can do a line count on this to prove it, but let's go ahead and get rid of the, I'll go ahead and just rename it. So this is the 10 mil and let's go ahead and just drag and drop in this large file so you can see there's taking some time uh, because it is a very large file 14 gigs but there it is we do not want to render this do not try and render that and then i can just prompt anything so i'm just going to say uh, mac bash word line or total lines in file. So I just wanna to see to get this. I think it's, yeah, word count dash L, perfect, okay. So that's all I need. Really nice in terminal GPT command file there that you can utilize. There you go, this is Simon W. Highly recommend it. I'll throw this, of course, in the description as well. Let's look at the line count on data.measurements.txt just to make sure that we have 1 billion rows in here. After we validate we have 1 billion rows, we're gonna rerun our generate table.sql script on our duck database. And that's going to populate it with 1 billion rows. And then it's gonna run the calculations for our BRC table. So let's go ahead and just copy this out so we know for sure this is what we're looking at. That's a billion rows. So we have a billion rows in there. Let's go ahead, close that. Let's clean things up a little bit. And now that we have our measurements.txt with a billion rows, we're going to rerun our generate table. We're gonna make one change here to the top. I'm just gonna say drop table, if it exists, perfect. Yeah, we just wanna drop the tables and recreate them. So let's go ahead and run that script. Same script we've been running before. So it's duck db and then it's left arrow and then it's generate table, perfect. So this is going to load 1 billion rows into two different tables, measurements and BRC. Measurements is just the raw values from top to bottom. So this is gonna be a billion row duck database. And then we're gonna have the BRC table which is gonna contain the min, average and max. Let's go ahead and run this. Awesome. So that's loading. When this completes, uh, our front end will automatically wire up through uh, the IPC process that we've built out and it should fetch with pagination all billion records and give them back to the front end for a clean user interface display. So let's go ahead and just let this load. Definitely huge thanks for sticking around. I know this is a much longer AI dev vlog than normal, but there's a lot of value here and I wanted to share, you know, how you can really use these AI tools to build out workflows, to build out tools, to build out software end to end. So that just completed. Let's run some DuckDB commands. Once again, we're gonna run our counts. So let me just quick look up counts. And so let's see how many rows our measurements table has. Awesome. Bam, 1 billion rows. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Okay, and then let's do uh, from BRC. So let's count our BRC. There you go. So that's got 3,755. So, so there it is. We have a billion records to operate on. Let's go ahead and restart our electron process and just cycle through. So as I mentioned with the BRC, uh, we're going to have um, up to you know 3,000 something rows. So let's go ahead and just bump this up to 10K per page. And you can see, yep, 3,755. But here we go. So if we move BRC to measurements, you can see there we have 10,000 rows coming back at us. And if we look at the main process, you can see we're looking at table measurements, page one, items per page, 10,000. And, you know, <laughs> tons of records here. Um, we can cycle through these. A lot going on, a lot of different temperatures. And, you know, if we hit the next button, you'll see there's some delay there. <laughs> um, and there's actually enough time during that read for DuckDB to actually put a lock on the database since it's in use um, for an extended period of time. So there it is, uh, there's page two, and we can go to, let's jump to page 10. Okay, nice, so we get a clean load there. And, um, you know, I'm really scared to bump this up, but let's bump it up one more time. I wanna look at 100,000 records on the front end, let's see if my machine, let's see if DuckDB, let's see if the electron process can pull this off. Wow. Okay, so we're now displaying 100,000 rows, we're on page 10. 
If we look at the back end here, look at the main process, you can see page 10, 100,000 rows. We have access to 1 billion rows in our Electron application end to end. We did it using AI Copilots. We use Cursor, we use Ader. You know, we use the Assistance API via our nice, really clean Turbo 4 wrapper with some new functionality. We can now build knowledge bases and then upload them to the Assistance API to use throughout the process of our threads. We can run arbitrary prompts on our knowledge bases. We can spy on the messages, right? We can. We can look through, if you've been with the channel, you know exactly how this is done. We did miss a little bit on the DuckDB page table implementation, but that's okay. We came in, we cleaned it up afterward. I've said this a million times, it's really improving at a rapid rate, but it's not about where it is, it's about where it's going. You have to look at the ball, catch it where it's going to be, not where it is now. And you know, with a lot of this technology, you need to be getting your reps in. It's not simple and it's not easy to go from an engineer that's been coding, writing every single line, even if you're using code snippets, right? The transition from that, the old school way of doing things to prompt engineer to agentic engineer to engineer that utilizes LLM technology, gen eng, whatever you want to call it, right? AI powered engineering, enhanced engineering. I, I'm calling it all agentic engineering. You're building software that can create software, right? You're writing prompts that can write content, that can generate code, that can generate other prompts, right? There's this whole incredible new wave of technology coming and it's important to get ahead of it, right? The AI wave is coming for all of us. The only question is, can you ride the wave or is it going to drown you when it hits? We improved the BRC table and you know we ended up implementing this really great workflow that if we look at our final kind of document here, it looks like this, right? So it all started from our Electron app. We built up the front end. We communicated via the preload, uh, you know, the Electron IPC process, hooked us up to our Electron main. And in main, this is our main controller. Um, we then ran the create measurement script to generate our 1 billion rows. We generate the rows and then we use Turbo 4 to generate and use a knowledge base. This gave our agent the ability to consume arbitrary knowledge bases and generate useful code for us, or at least code that got us started, right? After that, we ran the SQL that was generated by Turbo 4 and the knowledge base. And that gave us, um, you know, our two tables, the BRC and the measurements. Measurements contains all billion rows and BRC contains the compressed version, right? With the um, min, max, and mean calculated. After that, we were able to go from the database to the main process, all the way back to the renderer with the data uh, via a nice clean, you know, pagination API that we can use to paginate through rows and through different tables. And that's how we got our billion row challenge electron edition completed. Massive thanks for watching. I know this is a long video. There's a lot going on here. I'm gonna to try to cut it down to the bare minimum to give you guys the most value in the least amount of time. You know, with every video I make, I'm really trying to push myself and to push you into the future of engineering where we move up the stack. Just like I said in the 2024 predictions video, it's all about moving yourself up the stack. Move into a place where you're utilizing great tools, great technology, great prompts to generate results. You want to be controlling these agents, you want to be building these agents, you want to be understanding LLM technology, understanding generative technology, and building your building blocks, right? A lot of what I try to share on the channel is how can you build reusable pieces, reusable patterns that you can use to keep building other technology, replace your models, swap out your models, and you know, just keep experimenting with this. You know, Turbo 4 is one example of that. All the code is going to be linked in the description. There's going to be a lot of links for this one. I want to really emphasize how important it is to give thanks to the engineers, to the creators who both GPT-4 and all these other models are being trained on now, right? Even in this video, we pulled from two or three blogs and docs, right? We pulled from the DuckDB docs directly. We pulled from this really great DuckDB uh, SQL blog. And we pulled from the original, Gunnar's original 1 billion road challenge and built knowledge bases on top of that. And I really see this as, you know, the future of how we're going to power our LLMs, right? They're going to need memory, they're going to need context, they're going to need information that gives them special abilities, right? When we built out our SQL DuckDB with this blog post, it now has unique knowledge 
that you know was created by this author so it's always really important i just want to you know emphasize that again uh you know big shout out to robin um big shout out to gunnar you know everyone putting up content for agents to consume and you know build the next generation of technology the prompt is the new fundamental unit of programming check out the 2024 predictions video where i talk about this a little bit more in depth but really be focusing on your prompt engineering abilities and tools that enable you to quickly utilize prompts to build valuable software. Um, that's all I'm going to go into today. One quick last shout out if you're interested. I'm building an application called Talk to Your Database. This is going to change the way that we interact with SQL databases. I'm really excited about this product. I'm really excited about where it's going. This launches at the end of January. I have a crazy 50% off deal that stops on the 20th if you're interested. The whole point is to do less typing, do less query building, and just ask your database exactly what you need and it generates the results for you, right? It generates the SQL. It's a perfect use case for LLM technology. It's a great way for me to push my engineering abilities and provide value to you, the engineer who's building the application who's building the tools, who's building you know great products on top of this stuff. So feel free to check this out if you're interested. Think of the web version as a proof of concept. The full desktop version is going to come out, like I said, at the end of January. Huge shout out for watching. Just wanted to plug this one more time. I'm really excited to bring this to you, to share it with you. If you use SQL on a daily basis, definitely check the application out. Huge thanks for watching. If you got value out of this, hit the like, hit the sub, and I'll see you in the next one.